27. 1 Samuel chapter 27, and I trust the Lord will speak to our hearts tonight. 1 Samuel chapter 27, one verse tonight. 1 Samuel 27. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines, and Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of Israel. So shall I escape out of his hand. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. We are again, we're very thankful for your kindness toward us. And we pray now that you'd help us as we look into the word of God. I pray you'd help us over this matter of discouragement. You'd help us see how the devil would want us discouraged and defeated, Lord, uh, to stay that way. But I pray, Lord, that we would uh, just get a hold of the reality of the Word of God and you would spread the joy of the Lord in our heart, life, and in our church. And Father, we would uh, get past the discouraging days that we face as a church, as a nation. I pray for your protection upon Israel, Lord. I pray you would... Uh, work and move and I know thy hand is already involved in this situation and we pray that you would bring it all would bring uh, glory to thee we'll love you for it in Christ's name amen I want you to notice David is discouraged now the devil uh, was going to do everything he can do to get you and I derailed from the will of God and uh, many times uh, he'll do it through uh, maybe just getting our mind on the wrong thing or getting us involved in the wrong things. And it doesn't always have to be a bad thing um, to get you out of God's will and to get me out of God's will. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, situations. You know, there's nothing wrong with uh, playing ball. Amen. I mean, I don't know about you, but I loved, I used to love to take a, ba a baseball bat and a glove and play uh, baseball. And uh, we've even before, it's been a long time ago that we played uh, church softball, not, not in a league, but in our church. We may have a game every now and then. You know, those things are fine. They're very good in their own place. Uh, but nowadays, we have things that will derail us and get us out of God's will and they're not bad things, amen? We just, uh, we don't get, we, somehow or another, we, we mix up the priorities of, of our Christian life. And it, it happens, it can happen to the best of us, amen? We got to be uh, aware, that that's one reason why I'm very grateful for the, uh, the verse that we've been quoting. Uh, somebody said, we've been quoting it, we're not seeing nothing change. Well, you got to be careful of one thing, be careful of the Word of God the Bible said it doesn't come back void. And uh, we need to remember the Word of God. We're, we're practicing and honoring God's Word. And the Lord is going to do what He's going to do in His own time. Amen? Uh, but we're not careful. We'll get derailed and get, and get uh, out of God's will in, in several different ways. And I'll tell you for a preacher what can be. You can get too busy and not be studying in depth like you're supposed to. See, that's my... My number one responsibility here is to feed the flock of God. That's my job. And to feed God's people the Bible. And now the devil would love to get me involved in the, in the things of my work, which I'm supposed to work. That's not a bad thing working, is it? Uh, but it can, it, can, it can develop into something that's against God's will. And that where, uh, that's when it would become sin for me. Now, you don't have to uh, believe this. You don't have to. But I have disciplined myself. It's going to be a 911 for me to think about doing anything on Sunday. If it's got to be. I'm not going to physically do nothing. It can wait. Now, listen. Now, if we had a church water line bust or something like that, of course, we would fix it. Uh, but you got people nowadays, I'm telling you, that claim to be Christian and they're mowing their grass. I didn't get here, man. I didn't get off a lawnmower till later. Are you kidding me? You got your priorities mixed up. Hey, man, come on. You wouldn't have told your boss that on Monday morning that you was on the lawnmower. 
Uh, you got your priorities mixed up. But I, th I think you see my point. We can get derailed or, or pulled away from the will of God with many things. Amen? I love to deer hunt. I do. I, don't, I shouldn't say love. I enjoy it. I, don't, I used to like it more than I did. You wouldn't catch me hunting on a Sunday for nothing. It's not going to happen. Even in between, even in between services. No way. Uh-uh. I'm not doing it. You can do it if you want. I remember a boy come up to me and he said, Preacher, it was down there in the middle of Georgia. He said, I've, I've got you on a big buck. And I said, well, he said, I've got him moving. I've got him on a camera. He said, uh, he said, you can go and you can hunt and you can be back in your office before Sunday school and it'll be over with. And I said, well, I'm not going to do that. And sure enough, he killed a 12-point a a, a monster. I wouldn't do it. He killed him. He killed him the next day. I'm not doing it. I am not going to put things out of priority to get out of God's will. I'm not going to do it. I believe God wants us to be that way. We ought to be that serious about the things of God. Amen? And when we are, we stay on track. Well, sometimes things can get us, get us off track. And when they get us off track... Uh, the devil loves it. He can use, I'm just, I'm illustrating, the devil can use good things to get us away from God's will is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but there, when, when, when he can't do that, when we've, when we've matured and we've come to the place that we're, we're just, we'd rather serve God and uh, obey God as obey man. Amen, there's a scripture that says that. We'd rather obey God as obey man. And the devil can't get us down or he can't defeat us or he can't get us out of God's will. You know what he does? He wants to bring discouragement. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. And with discouragement comes a few things that can be painful as an individual or as a person. I want you to notice, first of all, that David is discouraged. If you can't see this in chapter 27, friend, uh, God has just given him victory, a major victory. He is in God's will. Did you know sometimes the will of God is not always uh, you know, happy. It's not always a joyful time. There's sobering times. There's serious times. This is a very serious time in David's life. And uh, God's will is not always going to bring a smile in my face. Now, I don't understand it, but I'm not going to indict God with a thought that God's not doing good in my life when it just doesn't go my way. Now, there's sometimes we don't like it when things don't go our way. And our attitude can be wrong. Amen. I didn't say yours. I said our attitude can be wrong. And we can get out of God's will. We'll have to get along somewhere and apologize to the Lord and say, God, help me. And we get back in God's will. Well, the devil wants to discourage you and me to the, to the extent that uh, major things take place. In other words, it's one thing to make a mistake and, um, you know, you ask the Lord to forgive you and you move on down the road. Nobody knows it, rather, but you and the Lord and you're just, you're fine. You know what I mean? Nobody knows it. It hadn't come out publicly. Nobody knows what you did or what you said. And uh, you move forward. But when the devil can get you discouraged and he can get me discouraged, major problems come. Now, listen, this is a... a a tool that he uses often, and it is very, very, very effective when the devil can get us discouraged. And I want to talk that. I want you to look with me. Go back to chapter 21, verse 1. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape under the land of the Philistines, and Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of Israel. Uh, so shall I escape out of the hand of, of, of him, out of his hand. I, I, I'll talk to you a little bit about how that uh, when David was discouraged here, he had gotten discouraged, first of all, uh, because his prayer was wanting. Do you remember that? There wasn't prayer in his life. David said in his heart, he begins to think along the line and begin. He begins meditating. Now here's someone meditating that's not meditating on the Lord. Uh, David said in his heart, he's meditating. He's thinking on his circumstances. He's thinking on the things 
uh, that he's facing. And, and we're all going to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as we don't dwell on them to the point that we begin to indict God. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. Uh, there is nothing better uh, for me than that, that I would speedily escape into the land of the Philistines and Saul shall despair of me. Do you see? His prayer was wanting. I, I said that. Uh, there wasn't no prayer in his life. He, his patience was worn. Do you remember that? When you begin to do things fast, and she said speedily, uh, you can tell he's making mistakes here. He's not thinking right. That's why it never is, you're never wrong to take time to pray <coughs> and evaluate things. You can't make a mistake by taking time and praying. But I want you to know he's discouraged. And in the midst of discouragement, distortion comes. Uh, that's what the devil wants to do. Discouragement breeds dis distortion. In other words, when you're discouraged, the Bible said, and David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. Did you know 20 some odd times Saul had tried to kill David and God had protected David? But David... Is uh, he's got his problems, don't misunderstand me, but when you get discouraged, you along with discouragement comes distortion, uh, you exaggerate, discouraged people exaggerate the problem. Discouragement is always going to exaggerate the problem. And what I mean by that is this, this uh, distortion, David's not looking at this thing right, he's He's been in it long enough. He's discouraged from what's going on. The devil's got him discouraged. And all he can see, look, all he can see is Saul killing him. But did you know what? There's not an ounce of proof that this is going to happen. Now, what had God promised him? God had promised him the kingdom, right? God had anointed him and God had promised him Samuel had told him he would be the king. Even Saul had told him he would be the king. There's not one ounce of truth to, to prove the way David is feeling. I shall now perish by the hand of Saul. There's not one ounce of proof of it. Matter of fact, if you get to looking at it, there's more evidence that David won't die by the hand of Saul than that he will die. But did you know what? I wrote this down. Discouragement doesn't need proof. Amen? Discouragement doesn't need proof. It distorts my vision and your vision. It exaggerates everything that's going on in our life. Everything's, wor everything's worse than what it is. For an example, discouragement disor uh, distorts our vision to the extent discouragement always exaggerates every problem bigger than it is. For example, discouragement will always make a mountain out of a molehill. Discouragement, one man said, John Butler said, it'll make a rattlesnake out of a worm, amen? It will. It'll make a rattlesnake out of a worm and it'll make a, a, a major hurricane or storm out of a lightly uh, fall shower. I mean, I'm telling you, the devil uses discouragement and he does it because he wants to distort my vision, how I look at things, how I operate. He wants me just focusing on what is bad and he exaggerates everything. The devil is a liar. He's always been a liar and he is a master at what I'm preaching on tonight. He will have you discouraged in a moment if you let him. Discouragement wants to block my vision. Now look at what they, all David can see, watch this, is death from Saul. Watch it. And David said in his heart, verse 1, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. His mind is determined and made up. Discouragement has got him so focused, he's convinced that he's going to die by the hand of Saul. And I, I wrote something down about this. We better be very careful when we're discouraged and we're convinced of some things. 
may I help you just a moment, please? Uh, there's times that I know when you walk in this building and I walk in it, the devil would love to have you and I say, well, what are we even doing? We're not seeing much going on. Why don't, bless God, uh, why don't we just go ahead and just shut her down and come on Sunday mornings? Uh, I'm telling you, they're not coming Sunday night much anyway, and lo and behold, Wednesday nights are not coming. Can I tell you this? I'm ashamed to say this, but I know of places that no longer have a Wednesday evening service. They just don't. I mean, it's not that they missed it because of COVID. It is no longer offered to the public uh, Wednesday night service. Did you know Charles Haddon Spurgeon, I believe it is, is either him or D.L. Moody, one of the two. Somebody can look that up for me and prove which one it was. But on a Wednesday evening, a midweek service, I believe it was. It may have been a Sunday evening. But anyway, it was a, a scheduled service had been taken off of the, uh, the schedule. And the men were looking somewhere to be saved, and they had to find another place and finally did get saved. But may I say this? This is why some of you may think I'm harping. Some of you may think I'm going to... This message should have been preached in this church 20 years ago and preached ever since. Because I'm telling you, uh, that we're not the only ones that have the problem with unfaithfulness. But we are to, supposed to be a, a faithful people. And uh, look, discouragement, friend, it doesn't take much to get our hearts distorted. It, 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 and, and David here is uh, greatly exaggerating what's going to happen. Now, if we're not careful, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll begin to look at things, and before we know it, we've got the doors of the church closed. We can't see things. Why? Because our vision has been distorted. Now, look, uh, we've got to battle it the right way. We've got to, hey, the only, if you don't stay in this Bible, and I don't stay in this Bible, and we don't stay in the, in the things of God, we're going to get discouraged, especially in this day and time, I'm telling you. With what, it's one thing to be trying to grow a church and it's another to have people fighting against you, amen. We're in a world, and about, there are literally people that pass this place, are you aware of this, that hate what we're doing. We're living in an evil, wicked world, friend. They don't like what we're doing. Well, let me just say this. David could only see uh, the bad thing coming. He was convinced, discouragement had convinced him of the wrong thing. Now look at this, is, let me say, it's one thing for, how can I say this? Um, is there a difference in a God called man, a man like David? Well sure, in a man like me, sure there are. I mean he lived in, he lived in the days when God would, would visibly do miracles and things. I mean there was a major difference in the ministries and the times that we live in. Here this man is, if he is discouraged and his vision has been distorted because of discouragement, don't you and I even begin to think that we can't be discouraged. Amen? We can get down at times. Now look, God doesn't want us down. It's not God's will for you and I to be discouraged. Now all of us sometimes get down and we're going to be down at times because of circumstances it's okay to feel sad at times. You just ought to stay sad all the time. Uh, it's okay to see uh, things that should be right, but they're, they're not right, they're wrong, and, and, and it'll change our attitudes toward things sometimes. We've got to be very careful. Uh, we respond sometimes, and we're responding in discouragement. We don't even know it, but we're so discouraged, we don't have many encouraging things to say. That hurt, didn't it? But it's the truth. It distorts your vision. Now, discouragement doesn't need proof, I wrote down. It don't need proof. I mean, God had given David so much proof and so much evidence that he was going to the palace, but here he is, as far as he's concerned, he is convinced he is going to die by the hand of Saul. <laughs> well... Discouragement don't need no proof. You don't have to. It doesn't have to have it. It just overwhelms you and I sometimes. Now look, not only does it not need no proof, and not only does it dis distort our vision, uh, it exaggerates every problem and makes it bigger than what it really is. 
But I want to show you something else that happens. Not only is, does it distort our vision, but here's one that, uh, I, boy, if you hadn't heard anything, listen to this one, okay? Because this, this may be, I think we could use this lesson lifelong, I'll be honest with you. It's one thing to be discouraged and down, right? And have a problem. Now, David has a problem. And what is his problem? His problem is Saul, his enemy, is coming after him and trying to kill him every day. Now, don't misunderstand me. He had a problem, but he exaggerated his problem because of discouragement. He made it worse than what it was. He's, he's not telling the whole story here in this verse where he could have killed Saul, where God protected him. He's leaving all that out because discouragement, friend, again, it doesn't need proof. It doesn't need any proof of anything. It'll just flood our hearts and minds, and before we know it, we're discouraged. And when we get discouraged, what happens? Our vision is distorted. Now, here's one that, that I want to labor on just for a few moments, and I'll let you go. Uh, but do you ever heard somebody of being delusional? Do you know what that means? Let me give you just a little bit of uh, thought here. It means that uh, sometimes if you're a delusional person, you can have false beliefs, basically. Uh, you, can have, you can make easy mental mistakes. Uh, you can uh, uh, take things, false judgments, and make them a reality. You think that this is exactly what you need to do. Now look, when you and I get discouraged, we want to solve our problems that we're facing in life. All of us do. And that's natural. God wants us to be able to solve our problems. But I want you to notice David here is trying to solve a problem. He can't solve it because his vision has been distorted. But here's the problem. He's become delusional. What do you mean, preacher? Well, let's look at the text. Let me give you a few thoughts and I'm going to let you go. First of all, uh, when, you, when you have difficulty in the Christian life, uh, most of the time, I heard Dr. Ralph Sexton say this the other day, uh, I would encourage you, if you can listen to that message that I, quote, I put on Facebook to listen to it, uh, we don't hear much preaching like that. He said he looked at the other day, he was preaching, and he said he'd come out and he said, I've come to a reality, and you know what it is? He said, I am sick of me. Oh, boy. <laughs> he said, I'm sick of me. I'm always doing this and doing that. And I, he said, until you get sick of me, you're going to make delusional mistakes. And When you get to thinking about the Lord, David here is so discouraged He's going to try and solve his problem in a delusional way because you know why? He's not seeing right. He's not thinking right. His head is not geared right toward God's will. Watch your Bible. Look with me in verse 1. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should escape into the land of the Philistines. Now I want to stop right there. Uh, one man, I think it's uh, J.R. Riley, one of these men that made a statement, uh, or it might be, uh, I'm trying to think, maybe I'll, it'll come back to my mind who made this statement. I'd like to give the right man the credit. But he said, David comes out of his heart and he said, there's nothing better for me. Listen, there's nothing better for me than that I should escape to the Philistines. This man said this, you talking about a major problem with that statement, that statement should be read this way, there's nothing worse for me than that I should have flee to the, escape to the Philistines. Uh, if you have your Bible, you don't have to turn there, but you can write this down. 1 Samuel 21, 10 through 15, he had done already tried this remedy. He had already tried to solve the problem of Saul killing him by fleeing to the Philistine nation. 1 Samuel 21, uh, verse 10 through 15, you can look at that uh, if you get a little time of study. So he'd already made that stupid mistake, but here he is again, and he said there's nothing better 
for me than that I... In other words, I don't see no other alternative. This is the best decision I got. The best thing I can do is flee to the enemy and allow the enemy to protect me. Oh, me. One man wrote this down. He made this statement. I thought this was good thought. He said, why didn't David think about fleeing to Moab where he had relatives, where he was loved and he would have been treated right. He could have went to Moab and they had ushered him in with open arms and he would have been successfully protected. But you know why David wasn't thinking like that? He was delusional because of discouragement. You don't make the right choice when you're discouraged. When you're discouraged and I'm discouraged, we make wrong choices. We make wrong decisions. Uh, You shouldn't have confidence in the decisions you make when you're discouraged. Discouraged people, listen to this, put confidence in unsound remedies. Discouraged people put confidence in in unsound remedies. I don't want to be discouraged, do you? Now, may I ask you this question? Once you and I get past discouragement and things like what we're facing as a church, do you realize how strong for the Lord we can be? Do you realize what God can do through our lives? I want to see this place flourish. I just like you. I want to see people come in. I want to see people be faithful. Uh, But you know what? When we come to the end of us, like Brother Ralph said, I'm sick of me. When we come to the end of us and we begin to approach the beginning of God, what does God want? What is God's will? Have you ever thought about that? Do you realize here There's not a shred of evidence that David's going to die from the hand of Saul. But because of his discouragement, he can't see clearly. His vision is distorted. He's going to do something delusional. Now, I've said all that to say this, and I'm going to close here. We need to be careful with what we're faced with as a church. need to be careful. Some churches today, I know of one, one man said they closed their, they they were, uh, what do you call it, Uh, respecter of persons. Only willing to reach this one, only only willing to reach that one. Could you imagine of a local news person getting a hold of some things that we've discussed? Better not make a decision too fast. Might want to slow down and just what I call sometimes when I... uh, I don't call it buying time. I call it, listen, did you realize we're not forced to make decisions? Sometimes we are on our job, I understand it. Sometimes life does force us to make decisions. But when we don't know exactly what to do, just to come across with some, and don't misunderstand me, I appreciate uh, human wisdom at times. But there are times in life when we need divine wisdom. We need it often. And divine wisdom is far out past human wisdom. Divine wisdom literally a lot of times totally conflicts with human wisdom. Matter of fact, my proof for that verse is this. My ways are not your ways, saith the Lord, Neither are my thoughts your thoughts. God said that. 
And we need to be very careful to shun the divine responsibility of the local New Testament assembly and what we do. Very careful. Very tactful. Filled with wisdom. We need God. Especially in this day and hour. I love him tonight. Don't be discouraged. Don't. And let's just be honest. It's showing hands. I, I would say this is probably, if you agree with me, would you slip this? This is probably one of the easiest things that can slip up on me and you so fast. And we get discouraged. We are. But may I tell you something? Can I use this to encourage you and we'll close? This is the Lord's work. This is God's work. Jesus shed his blood for you and I. We are his blood-bought church. No one loves this place more than he does. And when we don't know what to do at times and we don't understand everything, man, just put it all on him. I mean, literally flood the throne of heaven with what's on your heart. Casting all your care upon him. People, some people don't even realize it, but that word care, it's referring, it's not referring to how much you care for God or how much you care for other people. He's talking about the anxieties, the cares of the world, the cares of the Christian life, the things that fill our hearts and minds day in and day out. Some of the anxieties, some of the problems we have. He said, cast your care upon the Lord, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen? It's been so good to be in God's house. I'm thankful, so thankful for your faithfulness. Be in prayer much for these that are away from us. And may the Lord bless you throughout the week. Bring us back safely on Wednesday night. Amen? On Wednesday night. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another, watch it, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What a verse. Father, thank you again for your kindness. Bless our people, Lord. We have needs, physical, financial needs. I pray for these that are sick and away from us. We pray you'd touch them. Thank you for how you've um, made provision for us, Lord, as a church. We pray now that you'd bring us uh, more people. You would flood us, Lord. You would flood us with your blessing. And whatever that may be, help us, Lord. We'll love you for it in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands with one another. You're dismissed.